So I asked both Magnum and Greg if they ever encountered like a shoot fight in the ring with one of like when they were working with somebody or anything like that. And they couldn't necessarily recall a time where they actually got into a shoot fight in the ring with somebody. Did you ever have that instance happen with you, Rob? Um, kind of, yeah. but not, not really where it was a complete, uh, we're both trying to, uh, put the other one to a complete stop. You know what I mean? Like that would be a complete shoot. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but pretty close to it, you know, I mean, there's been lots of times where the, you know, where you go through, a, uh, an exchange of receipts and, and, and hit each other like harder and harder, but you one of you eventually is going to is going to back down probably um this thought just popped into my head cuz i was thinking like you know what story should i tell cuz there's been a few times you know where it's like you want to shoot throw them on their head and be like what's up you know it's your move and they yeah. stay down and they stay down so you don't really count that but starting out i remember a time i was wrestling at a church and somebody somebody uh and i was green like wrestling two or three years but i i I already had some standards and this dude was talking a big game before this the match about how good he was and he ended up doing something i you know stupid throwing something and putting me over his knee and spanking me and so i hooked his waist and i went behind him and i gave a german right on his head bam and i did it purposely stiff that's the way i was trained you know because i was like fuck you fucking spanking my ass in front of all these people making me look like an asshole and and, uh, but he was done. And there have been, uh, I can think of other times like that too in Fort Wayne, Indiana, with uh, those were like one of our first matches. And Sabu told those guys that uh, the me and Dango um, thought the wrestling was a complete shoot. And then within a minute of working us, I guess they believed it from how stiff we were and uh, like a rolling thunder or something. And, and then they just stayed down and we weren't expecting that. So it was like a one or two minute match. But those aren't the ones that stuck out in my head. What I thought of is a memory that I hadn't thought of in a long time, but it was a wrestler from uh, Forsyth, Georgia, named uh, Billy Black. You might even be listening to uh, to this. I don't know. But I wrestled Billy Black a, a lot back in the 92, 93, 94. I don't know, a, a bunch during several of those years when I lived in Georgia. We wrestled the Carolinas. Billy wrestled for Japan. He was Joel Deaton's partner for all Japan. So, you know, he was good. He knew what he was doing. And uh, we would get to, we were like tit for tat, you know, competing with each other. And I just remember one night where uh, I can't remember what happened during the match where our emotions were up, but I beat him. And then afterwards he like power bombed me and wanted to leave me in the ring. And I was like really offended because he just took my moment from me. And I was young and green, and I know sold it and went after him. And uh, we literally were exchanging punches, and then he'd walk, and I was following him. Then we can't, it looked probably like it worked because I finally catch him, spin him around, and we would go at it, you know, for a while. And then, like, he would walk off, fuck this, you know, and I'd go after him again. And the <laughs> referee would say, Come on, guys, stop this, stop this. You guys are friends because we were, <laughs> but we were just in the heat of the moment, you know. I was like, Fuck you, you ain't, you know, because I was like, Hey, man, I'm the star of this show. And it just felt, it felt right at the time, you know. Um, also, when I was really young, Green, I remember when Mark Starr fucking power bombed me and left me out there in Jamaica. Uh, my first time in wrestling, only time wrestling in Jamaica, but I was uh, super, super young, super green, had all these plans, and he power bombed me like three times, shoot covered me, you know, pulled my leg up hard, and then and then left me in the ring after all these plans and promoting this big show you know, for everybody. And then like, I had like a two minute match where he squashed me. And, um, I never did forgive that motherfucker for that. (laughs) I never did, you know? Um, but I rolled under the apron, under the rope. I mean, out to the apron, did a backflip off the skirt, caught hell from Jimmy Backlund and Mark Starr, uh, you know, as soon as I got back to the dressing room, uh, Jimmy back was, who the fuck trained you? And the, he knew who trained me, you know. Well, then she must not know what the fuck he's doing then. You just did a backflip after you got powerbomb three times? You know, I was like, well, I don't know what the fuck that was about. I wouldn't, you know, I shouldn't have got, you know. And anyway, it, it, it was, you know, one of those lessons learned by always, always, that's why he's, he's always going to be that asshole to, in my mind because he died. 
Uh, he already did see that I got to be a much bigger star than him, even though he said I'd never make it in the business. And Jimmy Backlund's dead too. Fuck, fuck, fuck those guys. <laughs> now, uh, Jimmy, um, you know, Jimmy was all right sometimes. At least I got to know him a little bit and got to know both sides of him, not the other guy. Yeah, and like, what what was the plan? Were you supposed to win or what was going to happen? Like, I honestly don't remember. Don't dude. Remember. This is my 21st birthday. Uh, so I was so happy to be uh, there in Jamaica, getting traveling, wrestling, and and um, I didn't even smoke yet, but I did on that tour for the first time, you know. But um, I, I really, I don't remember. Uh, I wrestled called Kevin Sullivan one night and uh, Mark Starr one night. I think I had a tag match, maybe or something. I think it was a three night deal, and and I don't know, but it wasn't. For him right off the bat i think if i remember right i think he like threw me into the ropes and mumbled something and i came back and maybe we ran into each other or something weird you know and he was just like i'm not gonna take a chance to get hurt with someone who doesn't know what the fuck they're doing in the ring and he was just like always like that asshole but, but looking back also i was a prima donna i could see where someone like me would have got heat with someone like him the old school guys that were that were there and here comes this young green kid thinking he's the shit because I, you know, I kind of did have that aura about me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think so. Looking back, you know, yeah. I mean, not that people told me that I was an asshole, but when I look back to my state of mind, I mean, I, I you know, I did believe I was better than everyone else. And, and that, uh, in that, I don't know, I just guess I really believed in myself, but I can see where, old school people would be like, you're a little too fucking comfortable around here, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's what gets you yeah, ahead, too, in a lot of ways, when you have that kind of confidence, too. So it's like finding that balance. It was, wasn't as passive back then. Although, yeah. I was passive uh, when uh, Mark Starr wanted to fight me at the Sportatorium, uh, like, maybe two weeks after that or something. Something happened, like, after that match, uh, they booked us together uh, to, to wrestle, and I didn't want to do it. I was just like, nah, you know, I don't fuck that guy. And I didn't realize how much heat that would get me. And then the next week um, at the sport tour, we got so much heat. And he was there, you know, like, you cancel a match because you don't want to fucking work with someone? Are you fucking kidding me? And you want to make it in this business? Are you fucking, you're, are, you, are you serious right now? And I was like in the ring trying to work out. And these guys came and ambushed my workout to fucking bitch at me and shit. And, uh, learning lesson there you know what i mean i learned like yeah you don't do that but also fuck him yeah yeah wasn't where's he, he job, at now where are you at mark wasn't he a job guy for the most part am i thinking of the right star i know there's I, I, I don't know he had a push um with chris champion and they were some guys from the future i don't know okay yeah, yeah. if i'm thinking of who i'm thinking of that might be who i would thinking of yeah, i really didn't get to know um he wrestled in japan also and uh was in that click in florida with uh, jimmy backland coconut kid johnny ace actually came down there uh pat tanaka was in in, in you know that click and they all were the veterans and partied and nobody wanted a fucking 20 year old kid coming up wearing a black belt that the promoter gave him and said if anyone asks you tell him i i taught you yoshikai you know, <laughs> that's heat. <laughs> that is heat. 